Welcome to Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective podcast, where we meet experts from all walks of life to learn their intrinsic motivation so that they can share it with the world. What do we have in store today? Stay tuned to find out more. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in podcast land. This is Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. I am Hamza. And I am David. And today, uh, audience is in for a treat. We have a best-selling author. We have an intuitive. We have a third-generation healer and had studied psychology and human behavior over 20 years in helping high-performing men and women create the best life ever. We have Dr. Sky Blossoms. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Sky. Thank you so much, guys. So great to join you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, we love it because you're, you're calling from the third world, and it was just interesting how uh, we ha- always talk about first world problems and can't get connections, and you made a very nice and clear connection with synchronicity in Costa Rica right now. Exactly. Well, the first or third is really a matter of perspective, isn't it? <laughs> But Absolutely. Uh, apparently, our call was meant to be because the way circumstances lined up couldn't have been better. Seriously. <laughs> now we always talk about a lot of spirituality and things here. I, I'd love to go over just the synchronicity that just happened. Oh, I would be happy to share. So, um, first of all, this I'm in Costa Rica now. That's for our listeners, and I was invited sort of last minute to this amazing uh, gathering for uh, Association of Transformational Leaders. And um, that in and of itself was synchronicity on steroids, but I'm going to skip that story and just tell the story that is relevant to us here. So um, I completely forgot that I have this interview uh, when I scheduled my flight. And yesterday uh, it popped in my calendar (laughs) And I'm thinking, oh, shoot. And, and the, the, the trip came out the last moment. And now uh, it sort of lines up, but I have the interview. And provided my flight arrives on time, provided my um, – and, and I'm sharing a ride with three other people who flew from different parts of the United States. One flew from North Carolina and two others flew from flew from Los Angeles. So all of our flights had to arrive on time. Our van had to be on time and there had to be no traffic for us to get to the destination for me to make this call. Now, um, as we embarked on the road, my group tells me, do you mind guys if we stop for dinner? Because apparently they haven't had anything to eat since breakfast. And I'm telling, oh, please, I have an interview. Can we get to it? And then I don't want to I don't want to hold them back and them being for another two hours hungry if they're starving. I said, all right, let's, let's just trust the synchronicity and surrender in perfection. Uh, I said, stop when you stop to the driver. And he was planning to stop at one place. Then he announced, I'll better stop in 20 minutes. So a moment he pulled over in front of a restaurant, uh, our call, uh, the notification came up on my phone, and Hamza, you called me. And first of all, I realized that I completely miscalculated the time because in my head, on all of these traveling and time conversions, I added one hour instead of subtracting it. So I was completely off in my head on schedule, off schedule. <laughs> But synchronistically, you know, getting steady Wi-Fi when you're moving through the mountains or getting steady signal is really challenging. So literally a minute ago, we pulled in front of this restaurant, and now my friends are having wonderful, relaxing dinner. And I told them, take your time. We're not rushing anywhere. I'm having my interview right now, and I can relax in the van and connect with you guys. This is just perfect. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love how when it all works out. (laughs) And another piece to that. So two of the people that are um, traveling with I've never met before, and we connected on Facebook to share a van ride. And I saw pictures, but I thought, okay, Costa Rica, San Jose, busy airport. I'm going to meet them. And we did not make arrangements of how we're going to recognize each other. Guess what? We're walking to the immigration area at precisely the same moment. So we're literally walking into each other from different directions. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. 
<laughs> and we'll get we'll get into your background and all that, but I, I want to keep the flow going because David kind of gave it away a little bit when we were offline. And what I, I wanted you to talk about, what or the first thing, is um, I love how, you know, maybe 10 years ago people were watching The Secret and what have you and, and doing vision boards. That was really big back then. <laughs> and you had put on your vision board that you were going to live in Mexico at some point. And earlier this year you made the, the jump. Yes. Well, actually, uh, Mexico was on my board um, vision board sort of by accident. We know there were no accidents, but I never thought of living here. I never considered that whatsoever. It was just there because the picture was pretty. <laughs> I thought, <laughs> and I thought one day it would be fun to visit uh, Yucatan Pyramids. And then uh, last year, a friend of mine went for a wedding to Tulum and really liked the area, and they decided to stay a little longer, and then a little longer, and then they decided to stay for a year, and she invited me to a birthday party. And before she did, I started seeing weird dreams. I saw a dream with where I'm climbing pyramids, with white buffalo running through the canyon, and a baby buffalo, and uh, me protecting some eggs, and white owl hedging out of one of the eggs. So it was so metaphorical and profound. And when I shared this dream with uh, my clairvoyant friend who is Mexican, she flipped because I was not educated on uh, Mayan history or uh, Aztecs or any of their symbolism. turns out that I didn't even know about Buffalo Woman, to my <laughs> I regret to, to admit. But she said, do you know how symbolic and powerful your dream was? This is just so many signs lining up for you. And literally a week later, I went to visit my friend in Mexico and that was it. I, I resonated with the land, returned back to California for a short while to finalize my affairs there in Wallo. Wow. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Has it always been that fluid for you as far as going from, you know, uh, I mean, you have such a, a, a colorful background of things that you've done. You've lived all over the place. You've had every form of life from um, scarcity to abundance. So I guess that's a good good segment to kind of back up for a second and just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the realm of uh, being an intuitive and a healer and a relationship expert. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Well, um, I was born with a set of gifts and a perspective that most people don't have. So certain things I knew from the get-go that we're infinite, that our body goes, but our soul is infinite. So a lot of things I knew as a kid and I could see them, but I also thought that everybody else knows that too. So I was surprised when people could not find information in a book they didn't read, and I could. <laughs> so... Um, and of course, growing up behind the Iron Curtain, uh, where even religion was not permitted, um, any of the woo-woo stuff was a completely forbidden subject. And even though uh, gifts of this kind run in my lineage, two of my great-grandmothers were profound healers. One worked with herbs, another one worked with spells. Uh, my mother is a powerful healer, too. She works with with her hands, with energy, and she heals people from all kinds of things, from cancer, from even – she tells me stories. I, as being a doctor, I have a hard time believing. She has patients with schizophrenia, with epilepsy, with all kinds of things. Um, so – all of these gifts were swept under the rug and we kind of pretended we don't have any of them um, just because of the environment in which I was growing up. So I kind of lived a very normal life, went to medical university and learned to achieve things through working hard. <laughs> and that's how it went for quite a while. And when I moved to the United States, uh, American dream was a bit of a rude awakening for me. Um, because <laughs> um, in being a doctor, I found myself in 
pretty much not having money for even food and struggling with immigration battle for years. It was really, really tough. And accepting jobs, not because I wanted to have this dream work, but because they would sponsor my work visa, right? So it was a really tough, probably decade of that. And then finally, when things got stable, when I was uh, not worried that I'm going to be kicked out of the country any moment, where I was happily married, where I had a good job sort of that I liked, there was still that feeling that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. And whatever it was that I'm supposed to be doing, I don't know what it is. And with my husband at the time, we went on a sabbatical. Coincidentally, uh, one of our destinations was Costa Rica. And here, after four months of baking cakes and swimming in the ocean, I had an idea of writing a book. (laughs) Pure inspiration. I never had an ambition of writing a book. And I just said yes to that, what I received. And the moment I embarked on that journey, magic started happening everywhere. Um, I had a publishing contract in three months after I had an idea to write a book. Wow. Um, I got to... uh, I got to interview some amazing celebrities that I never thought I would even meet for my book. And it it was just an incredible journey. And throughout uh, this, um, my gift was literally shown to me. I had no idea, honestly, what kind of power I had. Um, And I guess when I was ready, and it took me a while to grow as a human being, to, to, to go through spiritual development before I probably could accept the responsibility that comes with great mm-hmm. gifts. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then over the course of three days, I was attending an event in Las Vegas for authors when I was writing a book. And four people randomly asked me for help. And I literally was able to transform their lives on the spot. And it blew my mind, and it blew their minds. And um, some of them, again, synchronistically and coincidentally, happened to be speakers at that event and celebrities as well. So I sort of started working with people who were um, public figures right away. And I, I didn't charge anything for that. I was just, I didn't even know, quite frankly, what I, what I was even doing. And the first woman who I helped she asked me, what did you do? How was, were you able to solve it? Because I spent 15, last 15 years of my life trying to get, get rid of this problem, and you did something, mm. and it worked. And I said, I have no idea, but I'm glad it did. And okay. she, and I, she and I said, the thing that you do. So that was, that was the working title for, yes, yes, for yes. my work, the thing that I do. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, and and from there, um, it, it was the beginning of magic and getting a grip of, of it and allowing for more and more and learning to trust it, learning to completely surrender and trust when things don't make sense. Just know that it's going to be perfect. Mm. Well. That is such a great start. <laughs> <laughs> Did I leave you speechless there, guys? <laughs> the end. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, wow. <laughs> that was huge. That was really huge. So, okay. Well, now I, I, I'm kind of making it bad because it was such a big, like, beautiful picture. I hate to kind of, like, chop it up and dissect it. Please do. <laughs> right. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> so that thing that you do, right, mm-hmm. like we have access to so much abundance and magic, right? And so were you able to refine the thing that you do to what you do now, or were there yes. just latent skills that continue to grow? No, definitely. Um, so what happened was for the next six months, uh, people – just kept calling me for more help and I did not charge them and I would be just working with them um, 
because frankly, I couldn't charge for something I couldn't guarantee. <laughs> and I didn't know how it can guarantee. But in the process, I understood it better. I understood what I was doing. And I was able to um, trust that when the moment comes. So I had moments when somebody comes to me and presents their problem. And I look at them from my human point of view, thinking, I have no idea what to do with you at all. I don't know how to fix mm-hmm. this, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. But trusting that they came to me for a reason and they mm-hmm. would not have been guided to me unless I had wherewithal to help them. And actually, it was not up to me even to help them. It was done through me and all I need to do is just kind of relax and allow for that to happen. So that... Uh, and few cases like that where I did not know whether I would be able to help someone or not. And it worked every single time. And then I sort of made that agreement with the universe saying, all right, if someone is loud to me, that means I can help them. If someone says yes, you know, if they say yes, then I say yes. Um, and with that, I never sort of, I never solicit my service. I, I make people aware and I do talk about that, but I never coerce anybody to work with me. Or And I don't go when people say, oh, you should totally work with my sister or my friend needs your help. I do not even support those conversations because it's not up for anybody else but the person themselves to decide what they need, when they need it, and how they want to receive it. So um, the thing that I do now is a pretty pretty sure guaranteed thing. Do I have much explanation for it? Somewhat, but I think any explanation I give it would be still limited because it's different with every person and sometimes they discover things that are completely new. Uh, mm-hmm. For example, a couple of years ago, a VIP day with me, I knew it was consistently around four days, four hours and sometimes a couple of days, um, the intensive clearing process. And in the summer, I had a case when really, really severe trauma was resolved in an hour and a half. And I just couldn't believe how much was cleared in such a short period of time. Um, something that a person struggled with for like 30, 30 years. Um, hour and a half blew my mind. So <laughs> it consistently evolves as I go, probably as I evolve. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> one thing one thing that's interesting about that uh that you highlighted is it's done through you so it takes the ego away and that's how it seems where you're so effective yes completely i i do take credit for my willingness and for my surrender in the process and for i guess soul agreement to do this before coming in mm-hmm. um yeah. and and for my relentless a relentless uh, drive to open up myself and to heal my wounds if, as they come up and, you know, grow grow, grow me in the human form. So those, those are commitments that I deserve credit for. Um, and, but the work that actually happens is not me. Mm. Hmm. Actually, you look back. I'm going to say this. The, okay. the work that happens, a person whom I'm helping is doing that, not me. I'm simply guiding them. In mm. fact, and I think it's really important distinction here, nobody else can help anybody else. We, 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 mm-hmm. it, you know, the famous, the famous Jerry Maguire uh, line, help me help you. Yeah. So that's what happens. Um, they they are helping themselves. My clients are helping themselves, but I guide them how to because they don't know how to get out of a certain um, pattern or habitual way of thinking or limiting belief or whatever. Yeah. That was my next question because when you, you talk about a pattern and breaking, you know, I, I've seen where people have an over-reliance on, on you per se. And mm-hmm. 
how do you work with someone that's like, I can't, I can't. should I get out of bed today, Dr. Sky? I, I don't know. I, I need oh, your permission. That's, <laughs> that's a wonderful, wonderful question. So I think, um, and, and I stand by it, if somebody, um, first of all, I don't allow my clients to get reliant on me because I never tell them anything. I mean, with probably never is not a good word. Sometimes I do when I feel guided to tell them, but I got them into discovery. I don't, when people come, when, when you go to a doctor, the doctor does, does a bunch of tests to you and the doctor gives you diagnosis and they tell you, okay, you go to the pharmacy, you get this, this and that, and that's how it goes, right? It's pretty much very little involvement with the person who comes to the doctor. Mm. Uh, in my case, it's very different. I guide people through discovery. I never tell them that's what it is. I make them realize what it is because if I tell them, it's not as nearly as powerful. And, and with that, uh, I, train, I train you how to trust your own guidance because it's still your guidance that I'm connecting you with and um, training you to listen to it. Yeah, I never, if I had anyone dependent on me, if, if I did, it, I would be handicapping them and it's uh, opposite of service. It's ultimate disservice. And in fact, for me, even to see someone as disempowered, to dis- at a disadvantage, I could not even help them. I see people at their infinite div- divinity and creative power. That's why I can help them. And that's why I can guide them through severe cases like parents raping them. I, I have to see them as powerful, not as a victim. The moment if I see them as victim, I've got nothing. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what you yeah. mean when you say that they, you, uh, you know the soul and you feel the heart and you remind them of the beauty of their own essence. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So let let let's say we we know as as kids. Have you noticed? Do you guys have kids at all, or maybe? You, no. You, even if you don't have kids, you have been kids and you have seen kids. Have you noticed how entitled kids are? Yeah. They they are entitled. They say, I want this. And they often don't want to take no for an answer. They just grab somebody else's thing and they don't have a concept. This is mine. This is yours. It's all, they, we come entitled. And then society trains us into deserving things and to deserving love most for, most of all and we build all of these conditions around loving ourselves around loving others so giving a glimpse of the majesty of who you are is unforgettable um, it's it's a reminder of something that each one of us already knows and it's deeply ingrained and that's why we're not okay with perceived limitation. That's why we're not okay when we don't have enough money to pay the bills. That's why we're not okay when we can't find that love of our lives because we know we deserve it and we know it's there for us. Mm-hmm. You're, in essence, giving somebody a clean slate, it sounds like, right? So they can kind of, it's like a reset button. It is a lot like a reset button, uh, but it's not like the whole memories or anything. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we we do not reformat the drive. <laughs> <laughs> we just optimize the performance. <laughs> well, I was kind of kind of tongue in cheek about it because you know I'm just reading some of your literature and you and it, you mentioned you help high performing men and women create the best love life ever or the best life ever and they're coming to you already high performing but they may think that like you mentioned earlier i got to work hard to be successful so yeah you're kind of restructuring how they look at things yeah exactly so this is my lately favorite topic um I worked with a wonderful man, and um, I didn't work with him on his relationship with his beloved. He's very happily married, but I worked with him on his relationship with his business and with money. And um, he was really conditioned into this working hard thing. And um, I have observed after 
first of all, I've observed it in my own life. Hard work yields results, no question about it. But synchronicities and purposeful magic yields results that are um, incomparable. That mm-hmm. the, the, the magic that happens, the orchestration of the universe, you can never ever work hard enough to create that. I could yes. not work hard enough to orchestrate uh, my traveling companions and my peers walking right into me today at the airport. I could have not orchestrated this driver pulling into this restaurant for me to have this perfect interview uh, right at the precise moment. I could, because there traffic, there's so many variables, I could have not done it. So, uh, love and the greatest success happens to grace through this kind of allow. Not to say that there is sometimes you have to have a sleepless night, but it's never through effort. It's more through enthusiasm and being overly excited that you want to stay another night up and, and be in that creative flow. Does that make sense? Mm. It's mm, not out of sense. struggle. Yeah. So um, I, I think I, I want to offer you a little better understanding on, on, on the thing that I do. I, sh- I help people shift perspective. Because perspective is one key word that unlocks the magic of life. Circumstances we often cannot change. They're beyond us. But perspective, we always can. It's a choice. And the way you choose to look at things, that's the key. I had a uh, coaching call uh, lately with a client of mine. And when I asked for an update, she says, well, there are two things happen. One bad, one good. And I said, stop. Before you tell me the story, tell me your quote-unquote good thing as bad and your quote-unquote bad thing as good. Because you could. You can change around perspectives however you like. It's a choice. So you can say, oh, shoot, I'm stuck in traffic. This is horrible. Or you can say, oh, I'm stuck in traffic. Must be cool. I wonder what adventure this brings or what's the purpose in that or what is my gift in this. And interestingly enough, you will always find the gift, no matter how big seems to be an adversity. And I fact, I, I live it every single day. And um, if we have time, I want to tell you one magical story that is kind of mind-blowing, but um, illustrates that, how we perceive some, something as a curse, but then it turns out to be a blessing, and, and it's all a matter of perspective. Yeah, great. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't want to hear that story. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe how many questions you're dying to hear the answer for? Okay. So um, a couple of years ago, I was invited to speak at Sedona Yoga Festival, wonderful event, by the way. And um, again, beautiful synchronicity. I'm meeting with friends, with, with a person I interviewed for my book, and we've been over the phone and communication, over email, we never met in person. So we go to La Berge, which is one of my favorite places in Sedona, having this beautiful lunch uh, on the bank of the river. And I'm just in heaven, floating on the clouds, happily floating out of the restaurant. They bring my car from Valet. And they also announced that I don't owe them anything for Valet because it's included. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, life is just so good and getting any better. And I'm going to yoga class. And as I'm backing out, and oh, and I'm running a little tight on time for that yoga class. And then I'm planning to leave that Valet. A car pulls right in front of me. And I sort of kind of have to wait for them to unload their luggage and da-da-da. And I don't want to wait because I have yoga class, so I back up to go around, and I back up into a really high curb, which completely ruins one side of my bumper and the light in the back. Mm. And you would think, such a beautiful, (laughs) on-the-clouds moment, (laughs) and here I am, rear-ending my car. So... A second of upset, and as I'm driving away, I'm thinking, okay, so obviously it has to be happening for me. What's, what are the gifts in this? Yeah. The one obvious lesson could be don't back up for anything. Don't step back. Stand still and wait for the way to clear. Don't force things. 
metaphorical message. Great. Yeah. That in and of itself would have been worthy, worthy of receiving. So I'm making it to the yoga class, return back to LA after, after that conference, and my car is still having a huge dent in the back bumper and the light is broken, but I don't feel like repairing it. And I'm feeling that there's got to be some way how it's going to be repaired. And, of course, I can call my insurance, but then there's deductible, da 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 So somehow I'm not feeling it. Driving that car like that for two months. And then the trip comes somewhere overseas. And a couple of years ago, there was a service called Flight Car where you bring your car to the airport and you leave it with them and they rent it while you're gone. And they pay you, actually. Instead of you paying for airport parking, they pay you. And um, they, they take you, they meet you in the limo when you arrive, and then you've got your car. So you don't have to pay for a port shuttle or taxi. You don't have to park your car and pay for it. You actually make money, and it's better for the environment because the resources are shared. So I give my car to that service. And when I'm in Europe, I get an email. We're so sorry. Your car was in an accident. And I said, well, how bad is that? They're, they're dreading to send me pictures. So finally, I get back from my trip, go to pick up my car, and it looks exactly the same that it was when I left it. I said, guys, where's the damage? There's no more damage than there was. And they're like, we don't know. So what happened was a woman who rented it went to a mall as she was going back to the car, she saw someone hit and run the car, and she filed a police report. So insurance completely covered the repair, even though the damage was, I swear to you, I could not detect the damage whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So I got the loaner car, and my, my car was completely repaired by this rental company. So it didn't cost me a penny whatsoever. And why I would consider that a gift is because any time I get a doubt or I get anxiety or I get a worrisome thought about whatever is happening in my life, I get stories of miracles like that to leverage off. Mm -hmm. And I go back to that memory and thinking, what are the odds of that happening? What are the odds of me damaging my car pretty badly and it being completely repaired and me having having a loaner vehicle for as long as it was needed and it didn't cost me a penny and was completely stress-free? Yeah. What are the odds of that happening? And yet, the universe orchestrated all of that just for me in absolute incredible synchronicity. So what I do, and I would suggest that or recommend or encourage and inspire, hopefully, our audience is to have Miracle Journal and record amazing things that happen to you. And when you have a down moment or when you are in a tough spot and you wonder how to find solution, you go back and you leaf through that miracle journal, and you remind yourself of how amazing your life is, of how supported and loved you are, and how things always work out for you, so that you can relax and know that the moment the problem occurred, or maybe before, the solution was created, or Uh maybe because the solution was so amazing, the problem showed up, so that you could experience this wonderful solution. It's a chicken and the egg question. Mm, great perspective, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. When you, I love, I love it. I love, I love, I love the flow of this. Uh, it makes me think of of working out. Actually, like when I first start working out, it's kind of difficult. But once I work out regularly, it becomes easier and easier. Have you been able to find that with your synchronicities because you're you give more awareness and it makes your synchronicities even stronger? Absolutely. You're spot on because 
it builds your so think about this we we um our beliefs become our um, default software in a sense right if we were to compare a human mind to a computer <clears throat> so if you have if if a person has a belief that oh um i i don't know i see i have trouble even coming up with a limiting belief <laughs> <laughs> that's, a challenge. that's a good challenge to have, I should say. <laughs> yeah, it is. <clears throat> Let's say a person is constantly lives in anxiety or worry about the future. So then it becomes their default mode, and it's hard for them to see um, a different way that oh my God, life is wonderful and miraculous and things always line up for me. I always get, I don't know, free ice cream. It's hard to, or the best parking spot. It's hard to convince themselves into that way of being because their life experience, supported by beliefs, again, supported by experience, shows completely different. Now, if little by little you start showing yourself that Yes, my life is magical. Yes, I am a powerful creator. Yes, things always work out for me. Yes, there is a world, there is a way. Any adversity carries the seed of the equivalent to greater benefit. <clears throat> Those are Napoleon Hill's words that I live by. So if you start looking for evidence of those and collecting those evidences, pretty soon you will have enough evidence that it will be for you undeniable. Even though for someone, for your neighbor, it could be completely unreachable, nonsense, woo-woo stuff, right? But for you, mm-hmm. because you have already lived that, you practice that, it becomes it becomes who you are. You embody that fully. And then, yes, of course, it gets much easier. Because anytime we all have down moments, we all have challenges, but then they're great. And you start receiving them with a little bit of enthusiasm because you start going like, oh, cool crises let's see what great solution go will show up from here out of this yeah mm. so do you also look at you're not a part of um, the social media craze or watching the 24-hour news cycle at all then you, you stay <laughs> away from all that because <laughs> you can get caught and swept in with swept up with that I am blissfully ignorant. I haven't had TV. <laughs> now I have it because my apartment came with it, but I watched it. I, I turned it on once when they came to repair something, uh, internet. So I have not watched TV uh, probably for close to 20 years, maybe 15 for sure. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> that is Thank impressive. You. Yeah, probably last time when that Jerry Springer thing was happening and I was learning yeah. English. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, actually not completely true. Some years ago I was watching uh, sitcoms like Friends or something fun um, on Comedy Channel, but that doesn't count. So things like news I haven't watched literally forever. Yeah. Um, and And... Yes, I am ignorant. I admit it. I'm completely, completely ignorant to the point that when one of the hurricanes Katrina happened, I find out about it a week later. However, here is what happens for me. I live in Mexico, and I synchronistically go to Europe. Will all when all of the crises in Mexico happen? We have right. Um, we we had. A hurricane. We had a couple of earthquakes. Whatever. So the the energy is disturbed and it's all drama. I am miles away, an ocean away from that drama. And I come back according to schedule when all of the drama subsided. Yeah, so and yeah. I didn't pl- and I didn't plan it of course, consciously. But unconsciously that's just how it goes. Um yeah. I remember I was in a flying back to LA and the earthquake happened while my, my airplane was in the air right before it landed. So the earthquake finished and we'll end it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Wow. Well, let me, let me ask you, so there's a school of thought that time is, is a lot faster than it used to be, especially after 2012. And 
some, I mean, it can be attributed to a lot of things. We have a lot of distractions with technology. Uh, you know, something's always pulling our attention. Do you feel in your life that time is moving just as quickly because you don't have those distractions? Time is a perception. <clears throat> it's an entirely a matter of perception in my point of view. So you can... Uh, play with time and stretch it or condense it as much as you like consciously uh, we're, we're talking really magic magic here um, and um, sorry <laughs> the driver was checking on me <laughs> and I was waiting for him don't disturb anyway um, <clears throat> um, so I don't know if you have had that experience. I sure have, so see if you can relate. Have you been in the extreme moment when you had to think really fast and the time slowed down, when you were falling and you consciously moved your body in a way that you are not damaged or something like that? Has it ever happened to you? No. Yes. Or in a moment of accident. So what happened then? your perception slowed down the time. Likely if somebody was uh, really timing it, it would have been the same few seconds as normal. But the perception of time, when you go on vacation, you can say, oh my God, those 10 days just flew by. When mm -hmm. you are waiting in traffic, those three minutes seem like forever. Yeah. In my observation, the more we enjoy things, the faster the time goes. The more we dread them, the more it slows down. And the more we, and the reason why, because the more we enjoy it, the more we pack into time. So it's literally, it's, time is like a container that gets filled, right? So if we have enough fulfillment, it's filled and it goes fast. If we are unfulfilled, then it's dreading. Yeah. It was a couple of years ago, and it may have been after you had stopped watching television, but Chris Rock had a really good joke about that about 20 years ago. He said, "Time people say time, uh, time is really fast, and he's like, not if you make a big mistake. <laughs> it's like time goes really <laughs> slow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I I had that experience. I was hit by a car in Mexico a few months ago. <laughs> um, it was completely my fault. I was on a bike. Um, but, of course, you can imagine I walked away with just a scratch. Uh, but I was hit straight on by a taxi. But the way time slowed down for me in that moment was remarkable because I, I could calculate uh, the, the probability of, my escape or avoiding the collision and then as soon as I it was clear that the collision was going to happen it was not avoidable the way my mind calculated how I was supposed to lift my legs so that they don't get broken by by the car hitting the bike and so literally it was like in the matrix I kind of was above above the hood of the car and the car really really hit just the bike <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 And you hear people talk about that a lot, especially if when they're getting into an accident or something like that, how everything slows down. You know, they'll describe it those few brief seconds before whatever happened. It's like everything slowed down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Now, it's usually in the case of, like you said, it's an emergency or a crisis when that happens. But I'm thinking that you know how to make that happen more. You, like you can bend that time at will. What type of techniques or strategies do you use to do that? Mm, you want to know the real magic. Yeah, what's your secret? Okay. Um, really being present in the moment. Let's say if you... Um, you, you can practice that if you find something that you really enjoy. Let's say you find a beautiful bird or you find a beautiful flower or particularly attractive cloud in the sky, something. Start with nature. It's very easy. Really relax 
in receiving that experience as fully as you can and deciphering and, and observing and noticing all of the colors, the textures, the little sparkles, the little details, connecting with that with with that life form. And one thing I will guarantee you that your memory of that experience will be much more vivid. The sense of time will be lost. You may you know how people say you get lost in the creative process? Mm-hmm. So you sort of dissolve the perception of time in the now moment. Mm. And if you have a specific question on what would be the circumstance where you want to slow down the speed of the time, go ahead and ask that. So. No, I was just thinking in general. I know that for me, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur, so so there's times where I don't really have to look at the clock if I'm with the client, you know, I can, they like that I'm present with them. I don't, I'm not looking at the clock. Like I got to get back to the office or anything like that. And when I'm like that, then time flies by, like you just mentioned. So mm-hmm. I was, I was more so looking at it because it seems that, or the way my perception was, it was, it was more so accidental. And from what I'm hearing from you is that I just need to probably make more note of it, and then it it would be more prevalent. Yes, and also, you're right. And also, since you're the creator, and you are, of your life and of everything, of your reality, you get to choose how do you experience things. So if you want to slow, if you want to play with time, take it lightly. And just set that intention and play with that and say, hey, universe, I want to experience time uh, at different speeds. Show me and watch what happens and Mm -hmm. let it go. Like set that intention. Um, Maybe get clear on why do you want that. Maybe you want to feel more um, solid in your creative capacity. Maybe you're just curious. Maybe it would be just fun or all of the above. Um, Set that intention and let it go, and you will be shown, for sure. Mm -hmm. So the setting intentions a big part of of your work? Yes, actually, um, I changed the word intention. I use it now because it's more um, accessible to most people. But a couple of months ago, I got the vibrational tension in the word intention. So when we say intention, we're holding the tension inside and we're mm-hmm. not allowing the flow, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what I was invited to do or encouraged by my guides is to set in tents because when you set a tent, in tent, you create a space for whatever you want to oh. be revealed or to be created. Mm, interesting. Hamza and I are part of an, an intenders group, and we meet um, uh, periodically, and that's what we do. We talk about our intentions and, and what we would like to create for ourselves and, you know, and gratitude, things that we're grateful for. Mm-hmm. So it's just hearing you talk about intention, that was kind of, you know, right up our alley, I guess you could say. <laughs> that, that's a beautiful, beautiful practice, and I've, set intentions and encourage my clients to set intentions for years. It's just like a little fine tuning, I guess, on the process because tent, intent is a little more allowing. Uh, uh, I I like the distinction. Yeah, we have to share that. Share that with the group. (laughs) Does it resonate with you? Yeah. Oh, it does resonate. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it's like the word inspiration. I find that our language is really synchronistic. Inspiration, the spirit gets into you and moves through you. Inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. In spirit, yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or the word flower, you. it's really flow air. Flow. Okay, go on. <laughs> flow. No, you're right. You're right. Huh. I want to go back a second because before mm-hmm. you moved to 
Mexico, you had this vision and you shared it with your friend. And we're talking about, you know, keeping a miracle journal and, and looking at all the synchronicities. And I was just curious to know if you've had any further communication from this animal spirit world. I have communication from animals all the time. And um, lately I became very aware of them. I guess they've been there before, but I have not always noticed them. I had a friend, I have a friend in Canada who's really wonderful, just intuitively. She's not doing that professionally, but I know that's one of her gifts where she could uh, read into the spirits pretty well. So in the first stages where I was trying to understand why certain animals showed up for me, she was helping me. Now I am just observant. Um, And there would be days when I would swim in the sea and there are butterflies everywhere. Like, in fact, I led a retreat in July and I didn't know what, it, what to call it or what the theme would be. And I was in this creation process for a few months and I was not getting clarity. It seemed like I was trying too hard, but I was not receiving it. And I knew I was supposed to receive it versus to come up with that. Makes, makes sense, right? You guys feel the difference? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so one day I'm just swimming in the sea and butterflies are everywhere around me and I cannot tell you how many times butterflies showed up over the course of a few days for me in different ways in terms of pictures and words and this and that and I was like yes metamorphosis that's what I'm going to call the retreat entering the chrysalis and and the whole theme and the whole process that I was guiding my uh, my ladies through all of that was revealed so Animals are definitely great support, and they're encouraged, and they show up for a reason. Uh, a couple of days ago, I saw dragonflies they, on the beach, and then they were flying right outside of my window, like in, in, in dozens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, they, um, what I would recommend if, if, if any, anybody is interested in animal spirit, if, somebody, if some animal shows up in your vicinity really uh, undeniably, like I had maybe a week ago, um, a bat flew nearly right into me from the jungle as I was walking at night. Um, just Google animal spirit bat or whatever, whoever shows up for you and see mm-hmm. what they bring and also trust your intuition in decoding that and just be observant of what the meaning of that animal is and what they might be bringing into your life. Or encouraging. Oh, totally. I have a, a cheat sheet. Uh, I think it was Stephen Farmer who had written a book many years ago about uh, communication with animal spirits. And it's, I always keep it whenever, or t- uh, Ted Andrews has it. And it's always like, oh, I just passed an owl. What does that mean? So it's just always interesting. Of so, There's so much communication around us that, like you said, once you improve your perspective, it just broadens tremendously exactly and also when when there's really a message likely they show up more than once they Mm -hmm. they just repeatedly show up um because you can you can cast one as an accident but when there is two three that's definitely a message Mm -hmm. well i was always thinking since you're in costa rica the thing i always think about there is the howler monkeys (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but I, you never know. Um, any any animal can really communicate. <clears throat> I have salamanders showing up in my home, and I know b- b- because they're there only once in a while, right in my living room, or once it even showed up in my bedroom. And, then, <laughs> and if it shows up in your bedroom, you have to look up what that means and why it's there, right? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we totally did a total different direction than I had anticipated because the conversation was just so natural and flowing. We didn't talk at all about relationships and how you work with men and women differently or becoming influential and becoming the art of seduction. I had so many other questions that we obviously have to have you on another time uh, because it's been a treat having you i have some more questions 
I would absolutely love that. You guys are amazing. And um, I feel a little bit self-conscious and like I've been talking the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) No, you slowed down time. You've only talked for two minutes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. (laughs) Gosh, I could tell a lot of stories in those two minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want to leave your website and... I know you have uh, your book and and anything else that you'd like to promote right now? Well, um, I would like um, our audience, if you resonated with me on my website, there is an application form. um, um, Navigate your way through it. I'm not going to make it too easy for you. It's pretty self-explanatory. But you can fill out a form and apply for a complimentary consultation with me. So if you felt resonance and there's some burning desire in your life and um, you feel that I could unlock for you the next level of your greatness or success or love or whatever it may be for you, um, go ahead and reach out. I would love to connect with you. My website is bestthingever.com, bestthingever.com. And we'll take it from there, wherever it might be fit. Perfect. Right. And, and your book is there. I mean, you have a, a great website with a ton of information, a ton of uh, testimonials as well. So everyone speaks highly, and anyone that's had uh, any work with you has been great. Thank you. You guys are wonderful. How did you even find me? <laughs> <laughs> Synchronicity again, right? <laughs> wow, that's right. We need to put it in the miracle journal. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> totally, totally love it. <laughs> awesome. Well, enjoy your your stay in Costa Rica, and uh, we would definitely reach out to you just to uh, find out any upcoming stuff that you have, and also where synchronicity will bring us together again. That sounds wonderful. Maybe we can do a Valentine's special and talk about all of those seductive things before Valentine's so people have the time to implement. Oh, that's a guarantee. Yeah. We'll definitely reach out for you <laughs> for that one because the pressure's on the guys January 2nd. <laughs> you got to get ready for no, no, no. 2 No, it's February 15th. <laughs> oh yeah. well, I didn't. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a glorious day, but <laughs> that's another topic. <laughs> Let me quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so you have just been in tune to another great podcast of intrinsic motivation from a homie's perspective. This is Hamza, and I'm David. And we loved having you, Dr. Sky Blossoms, and please come back and see us and join us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Hamza and David. You guys were amazing and really inspiring, and thank you so much for the work that you do and for um, helping your audience to uh, get better, you know, get happier in every area of their lives and uh, helping people like me to reach more people. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Fantastic. Safe travels. Yeah, safe travels. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thanks again for checking out another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective podcast. Please check us out on our website at intrinsicmotivation.life where you can click on the speak pipe button and leave any suggestions for a future podcast that you'd like us to cover. Also, check us out on our social media sites. We have a YouTube channel, Facebook page, iTunes podcast, in addition to Stitcher and Google Play, all under Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. Check you out next time. Have a great day.